This is a 2D Minesweeper, the version of Minesweeper that takes place on a flat surface. For real connoisseurs, there's also a 3D version where everything happens in 3D space and the game field is a cube. Now in this video I'll try to raise the bar one more dimension and talk about 4D Minesweeper and also about a bot that I used to play it. In my latest Minesweeper video I briefly mentioned 3D Minesweeper, the one that is played on a cube. And it was part of a joke that number 9 is impossible in 2D Minesweeper, but very much possible in 3D, where numbers up to 26 can appear, at least in theory. Now, what about 27? And the answer to that would be, yeah, sure, you just need to play 4D Minesweeper. Little did I know back then that 4D Minesweeper is a thing. And a fascinating thing too. Developed by a guy named Julian Schlunz, 4D Minesweeper is on Steam, it's absolutely free and absolutely delightful. So what is it and how does it work? For simplicity, let's assume that all sides are of equal size, although in reality they don't have to be, obviously. In that case, a game field in Minesweeper would be a 4D cube, a figure that is also known as a Tesseract. So what is a 4G cube? What does it look like? Let alone how on earth do you play Minesweeper on it? Visualizing a 4G cube is not exactly trivial. Here are just a few pictures from the Wikipedia page that's sort of supposed to help, but in our case only add to confusion, as each image is more trippy than the next one. How can one not only to come to grips with this madness, but also use it to play Minesweeper? Well, 4D Minesweeper by Julian Schlunz offers a view of 4D space that makes it, well, quite intuitive. Let's have a look. Herr Schlunz comes up with a simple but ingenious solution. Instead of breaking 4D into a row of cubes, 1D row of 3D cubes would comprise a 4D cube, so instead of that he breaks it down even further and presents a 2D table of 2D boards. This way all the cells are right there and you don't need to twist and turn anything to get the whole picture. Next problem, neighbors. If on a plain board we know what neighboring cells are, those little 8 surrounding ones in 2D, in 3D that would be a little cube surrounding each cell. But what about 4D? Thing is, 4D neighbors are also supposed to form a little 4D tesseract of the size 3. And this notion doesn't make things any easier. The solution Julian offers is the second stroke of genius. In the game, surrounding cells are highlighted on mouse over. They're nothing else but a 3x3 group of 3x3 cells. That is exactly what neighbors look like in 4D Minesweeper. Not only it makes playing possible, but actually for the first time, I feel like I kind of understand what 4D cube is. I mean, I don't obviously, but I'm definitely much closer to that understanding than I was before. Couple more things about this way of presenting a 4D cube. Do you know where corners are in a tesseract like this? Here they are, all 16 of them. And those are the edges. And these are internal cells, each one surrounded by 80 neighbors. Fascinating, isn't it? The rest of Minesweeper rules are the same. Mines, numbers, that can in theory go as high as 80, but in practice rarely venture into double digits. There is no first click is safe rule for some reason. There is a very useful show delta feature that essentially removes bombs that you have marked. It's actually very helpful when you play as a human. Anyway, the 4D Minesweeper is pretty challenging. I think it challenges your skills in a way that regular Minesweeper must be challenging people who have never played Minesweeper. So even if it's not going to replace 2D version anytime soon, it's a blast to play. To have this surreal, literally multi-dimensional experience. Did I mention it's free? Because it is. And the link is in the description. Now, as much as I enjoyed playing as a human, I felt that my delight wouldn't be complete without writing a bot that would enjoy playing it for me. Minesweeper Bot was one of the first programs I wrote when I started learning Python. It's actually a great exercise for a young aspiring programmer, as it has everything you need for practice. Parsing screenshots, using a mouse, dealing with an array of data, 
The Minesweeper can be solved in a simple way or it can be solved using all sorts of tricky techniques. Minesweeper Solver is a kind of program that can grow with the programmer, being refactored and rewritten with higher and higher quality code with more and more sophisticated algorithms. This is my third attempt at writing such a solver, and by now it solves about 39 of expert games, which place it a little behind of the best solvers in the world, but only by a couple of percentage points. More importantly, my Minesweeper Solver works for any number of dimensions, so it can be used to play 4D Minesweeper 2. How does solving 4D Minesweeper work? I'm afraid this part is going to be a little anticlimactic. There's no special trick to playing 4D Minesweeper. All that the bot has to do is to abandon the idea of a grid where mines and cells are laid out in rows and columns. Instead, treat it as several groups of cells that happen to have a certain number of mines a set of equations, if you will. Once you do that, it's absolutely of no consequences what physical shape cells take in real life. Here's an example. This is the bot simulating playing a six-dimensional game. And it works just fine, albeit a little slow. Compared to that, 4D should be a breeze. And it kind of was. Let us now have a look at the final result, where the bot is playing a few 4x4x4x4 four by four by four by four and 5x5x5x5 five by five by five by five games. Those games actually have to be of much lower mine density compared to 2D to be playable and winnable. So this is the number of mines I'll be using for a tesseract of number 4, and this is the number I'll be using for size 5. And this is it for this video. I will leave you with some 4D Minesweeper bot footage. Source code is in the description. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you did. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.